$1.87. That was all, and 60 cents of it was in pennies. Pennies saved one and two at a time by bulldozing the grocer and the vegetable man and the butcher until one's cheeks burned with the silent imputation of parsimony that such close dealing implied. $1.87. And the next day would be Christmas. He ordered his regular breakfast, two eggs, sunny side up, hash browns, and two strips of bacon. He continued to look at the menu wondering if this would be the day he added something new. This was also part of the routine. A few seconds of hesitation to see if something else would be added to the order before demurring and saying that would be all. It was the same exact meal that he had ordered every day for the past two years. The leather jacket shone the scars of being his favorite for years. It wore those scars with pride feeling that they enhanced his presence rather than diminishing it. The scars gave it character and had not overwhelmed to the point that it had become ratty. The jacket was in its prime and it knew it. I recollect that my first exploit in squirrel shooting was in a grove of tall walnut trees that shades one side of the valley. I had wandered into it at noontime, when all nature is peculiarly quiet, and was startled by the roar of my own gun as it broke the Sabbath stillness around and was prolonged and reverberated by the angry echoes. He stared out the window at the snowy field. He'd been stuck in the house for close to a month and his only view of the outside world was through the window. There wasn't much to see. It was mostly just the field with an occasional bird or small animal who ventured into the field. As he continued to stare out the window, he wondered how much longer he'd be shackled to the steel bar inside the house. So. What do you think? He asked nervously. He wanted to know the answer, but at the same time, he didn't. He'd put his heart and soul into the project and he wasn't sure he'd be able to recover if they didn't like what he produced. The silence from the others in the room seemed to last a lifetime even though it had only been a moment since he asked the question. So, what do you think? He asked again. Barbara had been waiting at the table for twenty minutes. It had been twenty long and excruciating minutes. David had promised that he would be on time today. He never was, but he had promised this one time. She had made him repeat the promise multiple times over the last week until she believed his promise. Now she was paying the price. He stepped away from the mick. This was the best take he had done so far but something seemed missing. Then it struck him all at once. Visuals ran in front of his eyes and music rang in his ears. His eager fingers went to work in an attempt to capture his thoughts hoping the results would produce something that was at least half their glory. It was that terrifying feeling you have as you tightly hold the covers over you with the knowledge that there is something hiding under your bed. You want to look but you don't at the same time. You're frozen with fear and unable to act. That's where she found herself and she didn't know what to do next. Brenda never wanted to be famous. While most of her friends dreamed about being famous, she could see the negative aspects that those who wanted to be famous seemed to ignore. The fact that you could never do anything in public without being mobbed and the complete lack of privacy was something that she never wanted to experience. She also had no desire to have strangers speculating about every aspect of her life and what each thing she did was supposed to mean. Brenda was perfectly happy with her anonymous life where she could do exactly as she wanted without anyone else giving a damn. Thus. Her overnight internet celebrity was not something she was thrilled about as her friends told her how lucky she was. They say you only come to peace with yourself when you know yourself better than those around you. Derek knew nothing about this. He thought he had found peace but this was an illusion as he was about to find out with an unexpected occurrence that he actually knew nothing about himself. According to the caption on the bronze marker placed by the Multnomah chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution on May 12, 19. 1939, College Hall, is, the oldest building in continuous use for educational purposes west of the Rocky Mountains. Here were educated men and women who have won recognition throughout the world in all the learned professions. I don't like cats and they don't like me. I used to be allergic to them and I would get stuffed up and have hives. 
that doesn't seem to happen anymore. But I still don't like them. I lived with three cats that were not good at peeing in the litter box. They seemed to find something important to me and pee on it. Most of the time they peed on photographs or papers that would be ruined. Cats also bring fleas into the house. There is nothing worse than having to flea dip cats and also flea bomb a home. That is why I don't like cats. She was aware that things could go wrong. In fact, she had trained her entire life in anticipation that things would go wrong one day. She had quiet confidence as she started to see that this was the day that all her training would be worthwhile and useful. At this point, she had no idea just how wrong everything would go that day. The red glint of paint sparkled under the sun. He had dreamed of owning this car since he was ten, and that dream had become a reality less than a year ago. It was his baby and he spent hours caring for it pampering it, and fondling over it. She knew this all too well, and that's exactly why she had taken a sludge hammer to it. The amber droplet hung from the branch, reaching fullness and ready to drop. It waited. While many of the other droplets were satisfied to form as big as they could and release, this droplet had other plans. It wanted to be part of history. It wanted to be remembered long after all the other droplets had dissolved into history. So it waited for the perfect specimen to fly by to trap and capture that it hoped would eventually be discovered hundreds of years in the future. Time is all relative based on age and experience. When you are a child now is a long time to wait but a very short time when that's all the time you are allowed on your iPad. As a teenager time goes faster the more deadlines you have and the more you procrastinate. As a young adult, you think you have forever to live and don't appreciate the time you spend with others. As a middle-aged adult, time flies by as you watch your children grow up, and finally, as you get old and you have fewer responsibilities and fewer demands on you, time slows. You appreciate each day and are thankful you are alive. An hour is the same amount of time for everyone yet it can feel so different in how it goes by. You know that tingly feeling you get on the back of your neck sometimes? I just got that feeling when talking with her. You know I don't believe in sixth senses, but there is something not right with her. I don't know how I know but I just do. His mother had always taught him not to ever think of himself as better than others. He tried to live by this motto. He never looked down on those who were less fortunate or who had less money than him. But the stupidity of the group of people he was talking to made him change his mind. They told her that this was her once chance to show the world what she was made of. She believed them at the time. It was the big stage and she knew the world would be there to see. The only one who had disagreed with this sentiment was her brother. He had told her that you don't show the world what you're made of when they are all watching you show that in your actions when nobody was looking. It was looking more and more like her brother was correct. Many people say that life isn't like a bed of roses. I beg to differ. I think that life is quite like a bed of roses. Just like life, a bed of roses looks pretty on the outside, but when you're in it, you find that it is nothing but thorns and pain. I myself have been pricked quite badly. Then came the night of the first falling star. It was seen early in the morning, rushing over Winchester eastward, a line of flame high in the atmosphere. Hundreds must have seen it and taken it for an ordinary falling star. It seemed that it fell to earth about 100 miles east of him. The spot was perfect for camouflage. At least that's what she thought when she picked the spot. She couldn't imagine that anyone would ever be able to see her in these surroundings. So that she sat, confident that she was hidden from the world and safe from danger. Unfortunately, she had not anticipated that others may be looking upon her from other angles, and now they were stealthily descending toward her hiding spot. She patiently waited for his number to be called. She had no desire to be there, but her mom had insisted that she go. She's resisted at first, but over time she realized it was simply easier to appease her and go. Mom tended to be that way. She would keep insisting until you wore down and did what she wanted. So, here she sat patiently waiting for her number to be called. I love the feel of wood curls flying off the lathe as I begin to shape the log in front of me. The sound of scraping changes based on the wetness of the wood, the speed at which the lathe is turning, 
and the type of cut I am making. The smell and feel of wet wood being turned are unique. The water is sprayed out as I cut through the different layers of wood. A log can turn into anything one's imagination can think of with the right set of hands on tools. I have those hands and imagination. I use all of my senses and intuition to create a beautiful object. That is why I enjoy turning wood. A long black shadow slid across the pavement near their feet and the five Venusians, very much startled, looked overhead. They were barely in time to see the huge grey form of the carnivore before it vanished behind a sign atop a nearby building which bore the mystifying information Pepsi Cola. At that moment he had a thought that he'd never imagine he'd consider. I could just cheat he thought, and that would solve the problem. He tried to move on from the thought but it was persistent. It didn't want to go away and, if he was honest with himself, he didn't want it to. It had become a far too common an event in her life. She has specifically placed the key to the box in a special place so that she wouldn't lose it and know exactly where it was when the key was needed. Now that she needed to open the box, she had absolutely no idea where that special spot she placed the key might be. Dragons don't exist they said. They are the stuff of legend and people's imagination. Greg would have agreed with this assessment without a second thought 24 hours ago. But now that there was a dragon staring directly into his eyes, he questioned everything that he had been told. It really doesn't matter what she thinks as it isn't her problem to solve. That's what he kept trying to convince himself. She was trying to insert her opinion where it wasn't wanted or welcome. He already had a plan and even though that plan didn't correspond with what she wanted him to do or what should be done, it wasn't her decision to make. The question now became whether he would stick to his convictions and go through with his plan knowing she wouldn't approve. Was it enough? That was the question he kept asking himself. Was being satisfied enough? He looked around him at everyone yearning to just be satisfied in their daily life and he had reached that goal. He knew that he was satisfied and he also knew it wasn't going to be enough. Should he write it down? That was the question running through his mind. He couldn't believe what had just happened and he knew nobody else would believe him as well. Even if he documented what had happened by writing it down, he still didn't believe anyone would still believe it. So the question remained, was it be worth it to actually write it down? Devon couldn't figure out the color of her eyes. He initially would have guessed that they were green. But the more he looked at them he almost wanted to say they were a golden yellow. Then there were the flashes of red and orange that seemed to be streaked throughout them. It was almost as if her eyes were made of opal with the sun constantly glinting off of them and bringing out more color. They were definitely the most unusual pair of eyes he'd ever seen, sitting in the sun, away from everyone who had done him harm in the past. He quietly listened to those who roamed by. He felt at peace in the moment hoping it would last, but knowing the reprieve would soon come to an end, he closed his eyes, the sun beating down on face and he smiled, he smiled for the first time in as long as he could remember, they had made it to Las Vegas, why died and with so much hope and energy, they had planned the trip for more than a year and both were so excited they could barely control themselves, they still hadn't realized that Las Vegas promised a place where dreams come true, it was actually the place where dreams came to die. He dropped the ball. While most people would think that this was a metaphor of some type, in Joe's case it was absolutely literal. He had hopes of reaching the major league and that dream was now at great jeopardy, all because he had dropped the ball. The robot clicked disapprovingly, gurgled briefly inside its cubicle interior and extruded a pony glass of brownish liquid. Sir, you will undoubtedly end up in a drunkard's grave dead of hepatic cirrhosis, it informed me virtuously as it returned my ID card, I glared as I pushed the glass across the table, they rushed out the door, grabbing anything and everything they could think of they might need, there was no time to double check to make sure they weren't leaving something important behind, everything was thrown into the car and they sped off, 30 minutes later they were safe and that was when it dawned on them that they had forgotten the most important thing of all, there was a time in his life when her rudeness would have set him over the edge, he would have raised his voice and demanded to speak to the manager, that was no longer the case, he barely reacted at all, 
letting the rudeness melt away without saying a word back to her. He had been around long enough to know where rudeness came from and how unhappy the person must be to act in that way. All he could do was feel pity and be happy that he didn't feel the way she did to lash out like that. There were two things that were important to Tracy. The first was her dog. Anyone that had ever met Tracy knew how much she loved her dog. Most would say that she treated it as her child. The dog went everywhere with her and it had been her best friend for the past five years. The second thing that was important to Tracy, however, would be a lot more surprising to most people. There was something special about this little creature. Donna couldn't quite pinpoint what it was, but she knew with all her heart that it was true. It wasn't a matter of if she was going to try and save it but a matter of how she was going to save it. She went back to the car to get a blanket and when she returned the creature was gone. As she sat watching the world go by, something caught her eye. It wasn't so much its color or shape, but the way it was moving. She squinted to see if she could better understand what it was and where it was going, but it didn't help. As she continued to stare into the distance, she didn't understand why this uneasiness was building inside her body. She felt like she should get up and run. If only she could make out what it was. At that moment, she comprehended what it was and where it was heading, and she knew her life would never be the same. I inadvertently went to seize candy last week, I was in the mall looking for phone repair, and as it turns out, seize candy now charges a dollar, a full dollar for even the simplest of their weak confection offerings. I bought two chocolate lollipops and two chocolate caramel almond things. The total cost was for something. I mean, the candies were tasty and all, but let's be real, a Snickers bar is 50 cents. After this dollop a candy revelation, I may not find myself wandering dreamily back into a C's candy any time soon. Debbie had taken George for granted for more than 15 years now. He wasn't sure what exactly had made him choose this time and place to address the issue, but he decided that now was the time. He looked straight into her eyes and just as she was about to speak, turned away and walked out the door. The headache wouldn't go away. She's taken medicine but even that didn't help. The monstrous throbbing in her head continued. She had this happen to her only once before in her life and she realized that only one thing could be happening. Out of another, I get a lovely view of the bay and a little private wharf belonging to the estate. There is a beautiful shaded lane that runs down there from the house. I always fancy I see people walking in these numerous paths and arbors, but John has cautioned me not to give way to fancy in the least. He says that with my imaginative power and habit of story making a nervous weakness like mine is sure to lead to all manner of excited fancies and that I ought to use my will and good sense to check the tendency. So I try. I've rented a car in Las Vegas and have reserved a hotel in Twentineen Palms which is just north of Joshua Tree. We'll drive from Las Vegas through Mojave National Preserve and possibly do a short hike on our way down, then spend all day on Monday at Joshua Tree. We can decide the next morning if we want to do more in Joshua Tree or Mojave before we head back. Twenty-five hours had passed since the incident. It seemed to be a lot longer than that. That twenty-five hours seemed more like a week in her mind. The fact that she still was having trouble comprehending exactly what took place wasn't helping the matter. She thought if she could just get a little rest the entire incident might make a little more sense. He read about a hike called the Incline in the guidebook. It said it was a strenuous hike and to bring plenty of water. A beautiful hike to the clouds described one review. Not for the faint-hearted, said another. Not too bad of a workout, bragged a third review. I thought I'd hike it when I fly in from Maryland on my day off from the Senior Citizens Wellness Conference. I hiked two miles a day around the neighborhood so I could handle a 1.1 mile hike. What a foolish mistake that was for a 70-year-old Lowlander. She looked at her little girl who was about to become a teen. She tried to think back to when the girl had been younger but failed to pinpoint the exact moment when she had become a little too big to pick up and carry. It hit her all at once. She was no longer a little girl and she stood there speechless with fear, sadness, and pride all running through her at the same time.